everybody. This is Momo. I just want to tell you that I love you all. I miss you horribly. I look forward to hugging on you. And so take care, stay well, and see you soon. I would love to say Christ is the reason for this time of year, his passing and uh, his rising. It is more than a pleasure to walk in his footsteps. And I hope that uh, God's blessing upon each and every one at this time. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. We miss everyone. Stay healthy and well. Hello, everyone. Have a happy and blessed Easter. <laughs> everyone, I'm Nancy Watson. Uh, Easter greetings from your Grace Lutheran Church Council. Hi, I'm Jerry Gottschalk, and nice to see you here, and hope to see you in the, in the flesh very soon. Hi, I'm Marcia Heath, and happy Easter to everybody. Happy Easter from your troublemaker. Uh, 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 <laughs> also known as Amy Liggett. All right. And hello and happy Easter from John Preeb. Happiness and good health to everybody. Jim Snodgrass. Happy Easter, Jan Yos. And for those that aren't at our council meeting tonight, we have Liz, and we have Patty, and we have Ken, and we have Lois. And so on their behalf, a special Happy Easter to all of you. And last but not least, uh, PJ, Pastor Jim, and happy Easter to everybody. He is risen. <laughs> he is risen he is, indeed. He is, he is risen dope. indeed. Hi, everybody. I'll see you all soon. Bye. Hello, good morning. I'm Leo Afshar from Persia, Iran, and then uh, I'm, I'm here with the Grace Church. God told me, Leo, I stay with the Grace Church because they're feeding a thousand people a day. Thank you very, very much. Good morning. So nice to see you, Jim. So nice to see any church member. And one of these days, we'll all be seeing each other back at church. This is the season, we're so close to Easter now, and we think, what we celebrate is he has risen and we are going to rise above this pandemic. We won't have our typical lily cross at church above the altar this year again, but hopefully next year we will and we'll all be together in the church celebrating. All right, hello dear Grace members. This is old Lorna Guy and I miss you a lot and I pray every Sunday that we get together again soon. And I want to thank everybody that keeps the music going and singing and carrying on. Bless you all. Hope I see you soon. And happy Easter to everybody. So a great big welcome to all of you on this very special Easter Sunday as we celebrate our Lord's resurrection. And so we begin. Jesus Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Jesus Christ is risen. He has risen indeed. Jesus Christ is risen. He has risen indeed.
Hallelujah. Christ is risen. And so the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. God of mercy, we no longer look for Jesus among the dead, for he is alive and has become the Lord of life. Increase in our hearts and minds the risen life that we share with Christ. And help us to grow as your people toward the fullness of eternal life. With you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, we worship and praise one God, now and forever. Amen. In a world dominated by the evil plague, Corona, the Easter Bunny is held hostage in his den, unable to bring his yearly Easter baskets to kids all over the Southern California region. Distressed, the Easter Bunny calls upon the only one who can save the day, the only one who can bring laughter to the families at Grace Lutheran Church, the one who will rise to fulfill the honorable duty of the Easter Bunny. He is... The Easter Kitty. The Easter Kitty nimbly rode, walked, and trotted to surprise the kids at Grace Lutheran Church with Easter baskets filled with all sorts of goodies. Hi, Logan! Hi, happy Easter! In return, he received much love. A little bit, huh? <laughs> <laughs> He's so squirrely. <laughs> After a long day of laughter and dancing, Easter greetings. Happy Easter! Happy Easter! Happy Easter! Happy Easter! Happy Easter! Happy Easter! Happy Easter. <laughs> the Easter kitty slept very, very well. Happy Easter, Grace Lutheran family. Though we are apart, we are always together in Christ. He is risen indeed. This reading comes from Acts chapter 10, verses 34 to 43. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. Do you know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ? He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all he did, both in Judea and Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him up on the third day and allowed him to reappear, to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Here ends the reading. Psalm 118, beginning at verse 1. O give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. There are glad songs of victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. The Lord has punished me severely. 
but he did not give me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This reading is from Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. So if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things that are above, not on things that are on earth, for you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you will also be revealed with him in glory. Here ends the reading. The gospel for this Easter Sunday is from the 20th chapter of the Gospel of John, beginning with verse 1. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, but we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lined with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb, and as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. And Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. And Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But, I go to my, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. And so grace and peace to you from God our Father and from Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. And so let us pray. Lord, we thank you on this fantastic Easter Sunday. Oh, Lord, we celebrate your resurrection as you blasted from the tomb and into our hearts, our lives, and into this world. Oh, Lord, come and fill our lives that they truly would overflow. Pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleased in your sight. And this I pray. Amen. And so a great big welcome to all of you on this Easter Sunday as we gather on this most important day of the, of, the, of the entire church year. This is the day in which our Lord resurrected from the grave. And I'm just sorry that we can't uh, do this in person. Sorry we're not in our church building yet to see all the Easter lilies and to see all your bright and smiling faces. Please know you are missed, but please know that our love and prayers remain with each of you. Hopefully we'll be able to gather together in person soon. We'll keep you posted, we promise. 
And yes, even though we're restricted by electronic screens, who says we still can't proclaim that Jesus Christ is risen. He has risen indeed. Amen. <laughs> well, I'm sure you know how the drama of Easter unfolds. It began two days earlier on Good Friday. Jesus of Nazareth was crucified by the Roman authorities. He was nailed to a cross and a sword pierced his side. The soldiers even affixed a sign above his head which read, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. And after a Roman centurion confirmed his death, Pontius Pilate, who was the Roman governor for the territory, he granted permission to a man by the name of Joseph of Arimathea to claim his body. It is significant that they laid him in a broad grave. You see, Jesus owned no property in which to be buried. Jesus said on one occasion, foxes have dens and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. The tomb that he was placed in belonged to that same Joseph uh, of Arimathea. Probably had it prepared for his own burial when the time had come. A time-honored uh, piece of humor says that a couple of weeks after the resurrection, someone asked Joseph, why would you let them bury Jesus in your brand new tomb? Joseph shrugged his shoulders and he answered, he only needed it for the weekend. Well, that's true. He only needed it for the weekend, didn't he? But the act was done. Christ now lay in the tomb and his devoted friends were back safely in their homes as they grieved. And as they awaited the dawning of that first day of the week, where they could go back and anoint Jesus' body in a more appropriate way. And this all happened before Easter Sunday morning. And so we can appreciate the words in which John begins his description of that first Easter uh, day. He writes, early in the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb. While it was still dark. It speaks of the eagerness with which Mary hastened to the tomb to perform this one last act of love for her master. She had waited through the Sabbath in the dark hours before the dawning of that Sunday morning, and she just could not wait any longer. And remember, there are no street lights to guide her feet. Surely she stumbled from time to time, but hers, hers was a desperate journey. They had taken her Lord at night. They had flogged him. They, he had endured a travesty of a trial. And then they hung him hurriedly on a cross. There had been no chance for, for her to tell him goodbye. And then he was gone. Her grief, her grief was unspeakable. Thus early in the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary went to the tomb. And when she arrived there, she saw that the stone had been rolled away. It surely hit her like a, like a punch in the gut. And her first reaction was that someone had stolen Christ's body. Isn't it interesting that her first thought had not been that he had risen? This thought never occurred to her. I mean, dead people don't rise from the graves, do they? So John tells us that she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple the one Jesus loved, and said, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they've laid him. Who could have perpetuated such an act of des desecration? Mary's heart just sank. And Peter and John, they were mystified. So they began running toward the tomb. John got there first, but didn't go in. He bent over and saw the strips of uh, linen lying there, but for some reason, he just didn't go in. Simon Peter, of course, wasn't so reserved. He went straight into that tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. And finally, John, we're told, also went inside. And our lesson goes on to say that he saw and he believed. But then the writer adds, they did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. In other words, it was still dark that first Easter morning. The disciples were in the dark, just like everyone else. And Mary, who loved the Master so much, was completely in the dark as well. And her heart... Her poor heart was just breaking. You see, it's a dark world without Easter. No truer statement can be made. Without Easter, what else is there to do when we contemplate the loss of someone we love but to cry? Without Easter, there's no hope of being united with them. Without Easter, there's no concrete evidence of life beyond the grave. A true story was told about a Christian man and his wife who lost her young son in a tragic accident on Good Friday in 1996. The boy's funeral was on Easter Sunday. And during the memorial service, the father got up and he shared with his family and his friends that Easter had taken on a whole new meaning. Until you stare death eye to eye, he began sobbing. Easter is just a word. It's a nice day with bunny rabbits and eggs. But when someone so precious to you dies, Easter becomes everything, an anchor in a fierce storm, a rock on which to stand. 
a hope that raises you above despair and keeps you going. Yes, it is a dark, dark world without Easter. On the other hand, with Easter, we see hope bursting, bursting forward with every blossom of springtime. I was amused to read about an elementary school uh, class that was taking a test. One of the questions was, upon what do hibernating animals subsist on during the winter? One child wrote, all winter long, hibernating animals subsist on the hope of the coming spring. That may not have been the answer the teacher was looking for, but that doesn't keep it from having a ring of truth. We do subsist on hope, do we not? It's built into every fiber of our being. And finally, there's a story of Dr. Jane McAdams, who was a medical doctor, and she was shocked to the core when her 68-year-old mother was diagnosed with progressive lymphoma. Doctors gave her less than a month to live. When Dr. McAdams came to break the news to her mom, she found the elderly woman looking through a sales catalog. Her mother, a legendary penny pitcher, pointed out a very expensive summer purse and announced that she wanted that purse for her birthday. Dr. McAdams realized that her mother wasn't asking for the purse. She was asking how long she would live. Would she live long enough to use the summer purse? That day, Dr. McAdams decided not to tell her mother about the diagnosis. Instead, she went out and bought the most expensive summer purse that she could find. And every year since then, she's bought her mom a fancy purse. At the time of her writing, Dr. Jane, Jane McAdams' mother was about to celebrate her 83rd birthday. There's amazing power in hope, is there not? Hope is what Easter is all about. Without Easter, there's a dark, dark world. With Easter, hope bursts forward with every blossom of springtime. Jesus is alive, and because he lives, we too shall live. Easter is God's light beaming into a dark, dark world. And because Christ lives, the world is brighter than it's ever been before. And finally, just in case you might have forgotten, Jesus Christ is risen. He has risen indeed. God bless you. Amen.
us pray. Good and glorious creator, as we greet the signs of nature around us, of spring once again in bloom, of birds bursting with song, we give you praise for an even greater sign of new life, the resurrection of your son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The sadness and despair of his death has given way to the bright promise of immortality. For the resurrection is our guarantee that justice will triumph over treason, light will overcome darkness, love will conquer death. Thank you, Lord. But even as we come with joy, we remember those who are sick, who are weary with long hours of caring for others, who are fearful, who are grieving the loss of loved ones. Make them aware of your loving arms and let them be strengthened by the presence of your Holy Spirit. So as we celebrate this day of new life, we ask for your grace that we may live the promise given to us to imitate the life of Jesus in reaching out to the poor, the hungry, the hurting, the least among us. Change our lives and our hearts, Lord, as we seek to do your will in all things, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord forever. Amen. We miss the comfort of Jesus the Christ, Lord and Savior, brother and companion, who comes to us in, with, and under the forms of bread and wine during communion. We know we can't gather in person yet, but we often love across time and space, do we not? And just think, a spouse away on a trip loves across time and space. Parents who have died and gone before us are loved and love us across time and space. From the depths of the reality of heaven, we are loved. So spiritual communion is a trust and an awareness, a prayer and an acceptance that God's love is really present even when we can only be as present as our screens allow. I believe God's grace can work through and transcend electronic communication. Through our spiritual communion, the reality of Jesus and the Father's love, in and through the Holy Spirit is operating and present in our hearts and in our minds. And so let us pray. And so to you, O Lord, I believe that you are truly present in the sacrament of Holy Communion. Lord, I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you in the sacrament of your body and blood, come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, and let me never be separated from you. O oh Lord, may I live in you, and you in me, in this life, and in the life to come. And all God's people said, Amen. Again, thank you for joining us this uh, Easter Sunday. And again, please uh, know that if you need anything, please don't hesitate to call or email, email us at the church office. And uh, when the church will open, we don't know, but we promise to keep you posted, as I've said. Hang tight. We love you all. Our love and prayers are with you. And so receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. Lord, lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you.